Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. Have you ever tried to build a WooCommerce mega menu? I'm not just talking about the regular mega menu, I'm talking about the tab navigation. Yeah, this type. I've been seeing a lot of requests in the Bricks community about building this kind of navigation. And today I want to let you know with the release of the Mega Menu Pro 1.4, this is a reality. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to set it up. Here is the back end of WordPress and this is the Bricks template area. And you can see that I have already imported the tab navigation version 1.0 and that comes with the Mega Menu Pro version 1.4. And this is just a demo page content so I can populate my page with content. So these are the only two things that is required. And I've gone ahead to open the tab navigation and this is what it looks like inside the builder. And this is what the Mega Menu Pro looks like with the regular Mega Menu. So I'm going to show you how to set this up. Now, there are two ways you can set this up. You could copy the whole of these tab navigation into your header template, or you could just insert it into your header template via a template element. I would recommend the later. Why? Because you have enough space to play with. Now, this is how this looks on a large screen. But if you don't have enough room, you know, if your screen is small, it's going to collapse. And on top of each other, you see the tab and the tab content just like that. Bringing the whole of this into the header template to edit it inside this can be really tricky. So I would advise you use the second method, which is inserting it via a template. So I'm going to select this mega menu and I want to duplicate it because I want to use one of it for the tab navigation. I'm going to move it as the first item and I'm just going to rename that as tabbed mega menu. All right, I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And you can see we still have the former mega menu. I'm going to open that content and delete what we have there. But before I delete, I want to insert a template element. All right, then I'm going to delete this. And in the template element, I'm going to go and select the tab navigation. And I want to choose render without wrapper. Why? Because this is a navigation structure and you don't want the wrapper of this template to mess up the semantic structure of the navigation. Now on the front end, this is what we have. And this is the default state of the tab navigation. It comes pre-populated with sample uh, layouts for navigation. And this is a second layout. So you have two sample layouts. Now I'm going to go ahead and build a navigation. So what I want to build is something like this. I'm going to build a WooCommerce categories navigation with, with this. So we'll have accessories, cooking, fashion, furniture as the top level uh, categories. And then inside each of them, we have the subcategories like the kids wear, the men's wear, and etc. They are the second level. And then under each of them, you have the third levels here. So I'm going to show you the back end of WooCommerce, what it looks like. I have the product categories that I've populated with all these categories. So you see all of them. You see the first level, the accessories being the first level. Yeah, from this sample, the accessories being the first level. And then you have eyewear being the second level. I were being the second level and under it, you have aviator, blue light glasses, etc. Just like that, aviator, blue light glasses, etc. So this is the structure that we have and we're going to use it to build a navigation with the loop builder. All right, so we're back here in the tab navigation template. And what I'm going to do is that I want to use this one. Now let's take a look at the structure. You have the tab container, which is the overall container. You have the tab inner wrap. And then you have the tab list wrapper, which wraps the unordered list. And then you have the list items inside of it. And inside each list item, you have the button and the tab nav content. Now, the tab nav content has inner content. Now, what's the point of having inner, inner? The reason is to allow proper use of scrolling when the need arises then inside the inner. So everything is will be inside this. So we have a grid. This is a static grid. So we're going to change it into a dynamic content. I call it static because they were just statics. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to use this first ally for the loop and I'm going to go ahead and delete these ones. I'll allow the last of this one to remain. You know, for example, let's say you wanted to use a static content for the last one you can do that so i'm going to go ahead and loop this 
in order to loop this everything has to be one each so we can have all these multiple things just like we have deleted the list item i'm going to go ahead and um, delete this block so i'm going to delete the rest of them leaving one and inside the block are uh, the links see these sub links have to be one also i'm going to go ahead and remove my image so let's go ahead and do that now so we have just one link now notice this is a list item so i'm just going to call this li and this is a ul so let's put it there so we can see what we're doing so let's start i'm going to collapse this so first we loop the li so i'm going to go to bricks query loop enable a query loop i'm going to loop terms and inside this button the text here i'm going to give this a term name i'm going to put that as a term name so this tab will have the name of the term now to preview this on the front end i'm just going to click view on the front end and of course the loop is not showing now i want to view this on an actual page because sometimes when you are previewing a template certain loop items don't show up so i'm just going to go where you have the navigation and it's only the static content that is showing up now the reason that is happening is because uh if you go back to our uh, product categories you're going to see the count all here is zero which means we have not assigned it to any product there is no product i just created this category so uh, in order to allow them to show uh, in this demo i'm going to say show empty so even if this means even if they don't have product then they should show up now you can see that the accessory is showing okay if i if i move this like this you can see all of them are showing but i don't want all of them to show um i want just the top level to show so for the top level to show i'm going to come here and say parents zero so here is for the parent id but the top level don't have any parents so um i have to add here zero and then this will show up then but i don't want the uncategorized to show so i'm going to come here and exclude uncategorized and we have just the accessories the top levels and then the static nav so i'm going to change this to static so just to conf not to confuse us static um you know item okay go ahead and save that and look at the front end so right now we have our accessories we have cooking fashion and all that the next thing is to start looping the inside so we're gonna loop the li the list items okay this block so i'm gonna in turn on the loop and we're gonna go terms you know the way i did it is such a way that it was pre-populated so you can actually change this so it's we're looping terms product categories and then the parents will be term id so uh how you insert that is just look for term and you're going to see term id and you insert that into the parent what this does is that it queries only the children that are direct children of the upper loop you know the ancestor loop so for accessories only the accessories children will loop and then we're also going to you know turn on show empty and you can see that it is looping but then we have to change this also to term name so that we can see that properly so you can see they are showing up of course the first loop doesn't always show just the second ones in the builder and we're going to do that to this also so for this we are not looping the link we're looping the li because you have to understand the structure you know that you want so this is the ul this is the li and we're also going to turn on the loop and it's also pre-populated the same way and we're showing empty i'm going to change the text there the name of the text there also will be term id because we are also displaying terms now if we were looping product under each of them then of course in woocommerce navigation you don't list product you list the terms and then i'm going to save that so we can see the accessories and then on that accessories we have all the queried second level and then under each of them we have the queried third level categories and just the same with each of them and then we get to the static content yep so that's basically all there is i'm going to just show you how you can style this this is the default style now if you don't want this list item bleeding into the content you can simply go in uh, select the tab nav content container i mean and then go to the attribute and you're going to find a lot of attributes uh this you have data sliding through that is for mobile navigation uh, by the way let me show you the mobile so um, on the mobile this is how it looks um you have the tapped mega menu and then you have the you know the items here and then you have this okay so that is how it looks 
so it's fully responsive now let's go in there now it slides in now if we don't want it to slide in we can make it expand downwards but let's not waste time on all that data bleed through i'm going to turn it off so we do that you can see that it's not bleeding in anymore instead we have a line but we can also turn off that line if we don't want so i can turn it off by removing the divider and then we wouldn't have it and if you want the content to fade in instead of just appearing you can set this fading content to true and also if you look at in the builder you can see these blue dotted outlines just separating the tab and the tab content if you just that is for visual um, aid to see how it separates if you don't want that you can always turn that off element outline turn that off and you can, you wouldn't see it again but i prefer having it um before adding the colors i prefer adding it so i can see the division to style this you have to do it in the code block so i'm going to go to the navigation code block and now you have an instruction that says if you're inserting it via a template element, move the CSS to a style sheet or a code manager, move the JS to your header template. Okay. Now the reason you are moving the JavaScript is because if you have it more than one on a page, you know, you say you have multiple of them, you don't want to have the JavaScript, you know, multiple JavaScript files, you know, they are going to throw an error. So you want just one JavaScript uh, file. That is why you have to move this. And how do you do that? Just copy this, go to your header template. Let me just collapse everything and just paste it and take away the, just remove, remove the whole of the CSS and leave just the JavaScript. You can delete this cons and then sign your code block. Now please take note, I'm using Bricks 2.0 RC. So things might look a bit different. Now back here, you're going to delete, since you've moved this JavaScript to the header, you're gonna just delete that and leave just the CSS. Now the reason you are asked to move the CSS out to an external style sheet is because you want it to also load here in the builder because this template doesn't inherit the header template. So if you put the CSS there, you're not gonna see the result of your styling. But then if you leave it here and then you, you have multiple instances, then you're going to have multiple instances of this CSS. So that is why you have to move it. For now, I'm just going to leave it here for the styling. And once I'm done, we can move it to a more central location. All right, let's start. So the tab content background, we're going to leave it as the way it is um, because it's going to inherit the list item active background. Okay. But we can change it if we want. The reason it wants to, in, you wanted to inherit that is in this sample, you see the active item bleeding into it. You know, you see they have to have the same background, but not necessarily, you know, compulsory. Okay. So I've gone ahead to delete the instruction inside the tab navigation template also and it's time to uh to style this so i'm just going to clear that out to have enough space i want to see it in this format so first of all i want to style the sidebar you know like this 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 place where you have black here and to do that you have to style the tap list wrapper background i want it to be purple but there is a color called rebecca purple if i'm correct is it double C? Yeah, Rebecca Purple. And then now the width, you know, the top list width is the width of this. 250 is actually fine. You can adjust that if you want. The color of the top list item, I want it to be white. The active color, I want it to be white. And then um, the active item background. Uh, if the active item background is white, then uh, it's not going to be good. Why? Because the active item is white. So let's do it like this. The active item color, we want it to be uh, Rebecca purple. Okay. And then, yeah, the active background is white. Then the arrow, I want the arrow to be like a medium purple. Okay. And basically that's it. Oh, let's look at the front end. All right, so we have a style. It, it looks good. It looks great. So if we want to change all our styling, like this orange, red uh, colors, so we could do that in the actual um, template, header template, which is this. We could just go into the style and options, and then we change the primary color to that um, Rebecca purple and save it 
So now you have all the colors are in sync. So that is how you set up the tab navigation for the Mega Menu Pro. And it is not just peculiar to WooCommerce. You could use it for any kind of listing. You could use it for housing. You could use it for teams. It depends on what you want to use it for. So if you learn something in this tutorial, let me know in the comment section. Hit the like button. And if you want to get the Mega Menu Pro, you could get it here at Gumroad. I'm going to put a link in the description and you're going to see a link right here. So get it from Gumroad and use it to build your mega menu. I'm going to be bringing out more videos. We're going to build more mega menu live examples. Until next time, do have a great day. Bye.